Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news coming to us from Detroit where firefighters are battling a fire at the Woodward Bar. Thank you for joining us this noon. The bar is at Woodward and Milwaukee. It is in the New Center area, and this is video from that scene. Victor Williams is there joining us live with a closer look at what you're learning in terms of the amount of damage there at the restaurant or if there were any injuries. Yeah, Rhonda. Well, crews have been battling this blaze for about an hour now. Take a look right behind me. You can see where the water is being just launched into the building and hoping of dousing those flames. We even had a few firefighters on top of the building trying to attack the flames with water from above. But we're told that this happened just a little over an hour ago. And then from there, they tried their best to evacuate the entire building. We're not just talking about the bar, but multiple businesses right over here in this building, as well as a residential area. We were actually able to catch up to one of those residents, as well as someone that was in the bank inside of the building. And here's what they had to say when they just saw nothing but smoke. And I live on the residence facing Woodward. And when I stepped out onto my balcony after smelling smoke, I couldn't even see the GM headquarters across the, well, the old GM quarters across the street. And I immediately got concerned. And I'm glad to see all my other fellow residents safe on the floor. But this is very alarming. I drove around the park. And went in the bank, it was just a little smoke. And then when I came out, police came in there, so y'all get out. It started blazing, flaming. They, was, they told everybody in this whole block to get out the building, the beauty salon, everything. Now, at this point, we are not sure if anyone was hurt in this fire. We're hoping that everyone is OK. We know that investigators are even working to find out what sparked the flames to begin with. But of course, we'll stay on top of this as the investigation continues. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, thank you. And of course, as Victor keeps on top of the situation there, we'll keep you updated as well here on Local 4 and click on Detroit.com as we learn any new updates that come into our newsroom. Meantime, the other big story right now is the weather as we take a live look outside at the downtown Detroit skyline. Our sky cam not really indicating what is coming our way, and that is record breaking heat, Brandon. And we need the sun to do that. It is not too far away, but since we've got the clouds around, we've been sort of lingering here in the low middle 70s. It's 73 at Metro, 74 Pontiac, 73 right now Mount Clemens, 70 Harrow, Ontario, 20 Celsius or so. And you see some pretty thick clouds over the heart of Metro Detroit. But as we widen out, you can see some clearing across southwestern lower that is coming our way along with a warm front. So a big boost in temperatures into the middle 80s this afternoon with more sunshine, more humidity. But the excessive heat watch, Rhonda, that's tomorrow. And I've got it covered coming up. All right, that excessive heat watch means that these dangerous conditions are going to keep DTE busy trying to handle the situation. So for more on that, Rod Maloney joins us now live with what you're learning in terms of how to keep the power up and running when people are going to be using at least the AC more than ever. That's right, Rhonda. You know, one of the things they're breathing a sigh of relief about this morning is the fact that we didn't have those major storms last night, so there aren't major outages. Now, we're here at the Pontiac Service Station here, where they have most of their repair crews uh, that they marshal out of here, um, and they're telling us that they're very happy that they didn't have all of that manpower out there yesterday, and they're sort of girding now for those high temperatures. Right now, it's 74 degrees right here uh, in Pontiac, but it's going to be about 94 or 5 here about this time tomorrow and so DTE is saying uh, they are in fact getting ready. They have a lot of things that they do. I spoke to Trevor Lauer who is the president and chief uh, operating officer of DTE and this is what he told me just minutes ago about where they are right now. We'll stop any conditional maintenance that doesn't need to be done so that all the plants are up and running. We'll check and make sure that all the fuel sources we need are there. We have the ability to use what we call interruptible customers. So we have a whole series of customers that allow us to interrupt their service and they get a lower bill because of that. So we'll be contacting those customers saying, 
There's a good possibility that you could be interrupted in the upcoming days for a short period of time. And so if you are on that, you should be on notice now that uh, you could be losing power up to about 15 minutes at a time. But here are some of the things that the DTE is recommending you do over the next 24 hours if you can. First of all, they would say cook outdoors. If you've got a barbecue grill, cook outdoors. There's no need to cook inside the house. Uh, close your shades. Don't do laundry if you don't have to. They say uh, use, don't, on your dishwasher, don't use the heat function. They say take out a dish towel, dry the dishes that way. Uh, take some quick showers turn down the hot water heater. Um, they said that the other thing that you need to think about is that this may need to become a bit of a habit uh, in that over the next couple of weeks, they are expecting very high temperatures and these kinds of conditions continuing. So there's much more to this, and we're going to take a look at that. And then another power company up north that is concerned about the long-term issues here with the hot weather. So we'll have all of that for you coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live from Pontiac, Rod Malone, Local 4. All right, Rod, thank you for the update. And right now, the FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee is meeting to decide whether or not to recommend authorizing Moderna's vaccine for children ages 6 to 17. Currently, Pfizer is the only available vaccine for this age group. Moderna asked the FDA to clear its vaccine for use in 12 to 17-year-olds last June, but the FDA was concerned about a possible link between the Moderna vaccine and myocarditis in young men and put Moderna's application on hold until more studies could be completed. Those studies are a major focus of today's meeting. We have data now for long-term safety follow-up for a median duration of 5.6 months among the original vaccine recipients. No new safety signals were observed and there were no deaths, related SAEs, or adverse events of Miss c or myocarditis in the original vaccine group. A vote on Moderna for older kids is expected this afternoon, so we will have that full update for you later today on Local 4 News at 4 and 5. And then tomorrow, the same panel of experts are going to be voting on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine for younger children under the age of 5. Turning now our attention to the stock market as we look live at the big board. Stocks are again dipping one day after the S&P 500 slid into a bear market on fears that inflation will prompt more aggressive rate increases from the Federal Reserve. The S&P 500, NASDAQ and Dow Industrials all retreated in morning trading, handing back early gains. The Federal Reserve is expected to increase interest rates tomorrow. Some economists say a recession is likely. And gas prices are holding steady over the past 24 hours, but the price is still very high. A penny off the all-time record today. Michigan drivers are paying on average $5.21 a gallon for regular, and that is the same as yesterday, but it's still four cents more than this time last week. But here's where the sticker shot comes. 86 cents more than what we were paying just one month ago. Meantime, President Joe Biden is going to be visiting Israel, the West Bank and Saudi Arabia next month. Some see the Saudi Arabia visit as a reversal of his campaign promise to make the kingdom a, quote, pariah. The president insists the trip isn't tied to energy issues, even as gas prices soar. He is expected to meet with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. U.S. intelligence believes that the prince authorized the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and President Biden's move to normalize relations with the Saudis is being met with criticism from some human rights advocates. The White House says that the president will outline his affirmative vision for U.S. engagement in the region, noting Saudi Arabia has been a strategic partner of the United States for nearly eight decades. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th siege on the U.S. Capitol makes an announcement to its schedule. The hearing originally planned for Wednesday has been postponed. Sources say that a technical issue led to the delay. The committee's work is expected to resume on Thursday. Also making political headlines, the gubernatorial campaign for former Detroit Police Chief James Craig says that he will be filing paperwork with the state today to run as a write-in candidate for the August primary. This comes after he was removed from the ballot for fraudulent petition signatures and striking out on a court appeal. 
We are working to learn more about a standoff at the Red Roof Inn in Melvindale, where a police SWAT team is on the scene. Dick's Road is still closed. It has been throughout the morning between Oakwood Boulevard and Rose Avenue. So to come here on your Tuesday at noon, severe weather impacts parts of the Midwest. A report from Illinois after the break. And a reminder that we are on the scene of breaking news right now. This is a fire in the new center area where firefighters are battling the fire at the Woodward Bar, which is right there at the corner of Woodward and Milwaukee. These are live pictures from the scene, and we will continue to keep you updated both here on the air and online as we learn more about the potential cause of that fire. But so far, no injuries have been reported.